In this lesson we're going to use Microsoft Excel and a new template that I've completed. The template makes it very easy to load your XML capture buffer data and view and analyze it. So all you do first of all you load the nano.xlt. XLT means that it's a uh, template file. Once you've loaded that you can go over here and you select your data. XML data, import and go to wherever you want to pick up your files. In this example we're going to pick up file number 24 and that happens to be in a clamp on amp meter ramp signal of a fuel pump, electric fuel pump. And we're going to cut down the first 200 samples. Just right click uh, source data, change to 600 which I defaulted to 600 you usually don't need two, 4,000. We're going to change the 600 to 200. Now it's spread out. If you want to count the uh, frequency of these pulses, electric motor fuel pump has an armature usually of eight armature windings. Therefore, we get the sample sequence number right here is 19. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Sequence number here is 125. I forgot the first one already. 125 minus 19. So 125 minus 19 equals it says 7,076 RPM. So that's how you measure the frequency of eight of these humps, which happens to be one revolution of the fuel pump. So the fuel pump should run in a neighborhood of 7,000 RPM, and this one does. This is a fairly new fuel, fuel pump. It only has a few hours of operation on it. If you want to do offsets, you can offset the sequence numbers. If you want to delete some, previous videos tell you how to do that. So I just threw the formulas in here so you got something to work with. You can just change the offset value right here. Same way with the multiply by gain factor. I threw the formula in so you can go ahead and change the gain to whatever number you want to make the gain factor be. And then as is shown in previous videos you just copy and go down the list and paste it in. And that'll take care of that. In this example we'll bring in a um, ignition signal. And notice the first 600 cycles doesn't show you too much so 600 sequence number. So we can go ahead and right click and change the source data. Make it 4,000. 4, I'm going to go up to 4,000. 4,000 now we can see the entire capture buffer. This particular waveform was used in an earlier lesson describing how to view a capacitive coupled high voltage probe on the ignition system. So notice how easy it is to use this template. Everything just falls right into place, literally. Let's do one more example. Okay, this time we're going to view file number 26. It happens to be just a, a new, very unusual signal because of what I did. I took a inductive pickup timing light, a real cheap one. And I took the two wires coming out of the inductive clamp. And I simply put it on the input of the nano. And here's the waveform we got. So let's move it down here so we can see it a little bit closer. Uh, I'll make 200. Source data, change it down to 200. This is the same fuel pump circuit. I just want to show you that you don't have to buy fancy dancy gizmos to get the job done. Here's our fuel pump waveform. We'll start right here, for example. 0.16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's point 124. So 124 and 16. 124, 16 equals, notice same thing, 6,900 RPM for the fuel pump. And we have a usable signal. Just looking at an inductive clamp on signal using a nano. So anytime you want to do something, just close the previous thing open up the template, the nano template, nano.xlt, and you're ready to load your data, XML data, import. Go any place you want to get data, load any data you want to. 
one thing you need to keep in mind while viewing this data is when you go to save the data make sure you save it as something else because if you save it as the XLT Nano it'll write over and once you've loaded data in these boxes you can't get it out of those boxes so I recommend that you if you go to save anything save it to a different file name with a different extent you want to extend XLS that way it captures the charts and everything in the file that you save and it won't overwrite your template file so just remember you have to use custom file name anytime you save this XLS format of the file you've been working with the other thing I want to briefly mention is where you can get a copy of this template it's right here at this location this particular post right here and it's nanoexcel.zip if you download that nanoexcel.zip and you unzip it you'll find nano.xlt which is the file we've been using so good luck with your nano xml viewing endeavors